Good morning guys, welcome back to the channel. A uh, little update on my back, everything's good. Went to the chiropractor. One of the guys at work was referring me to this doctor in Westchester for so long and I've been putting it off and putting it off and putting it off. Went, uh, miracle. I feel great, I feel 100%. But I'm gonna put the back to the test now because yes, we got two inches of ice. I mean, this stuff is so annoying. I just want like 12 inches of snow. That's what I want. 12 inches of snow, not these crappy two to four inches of crap. I mean, this is this is nothing but annoying is what this is. Nothing but annoying. So I'm going to have to shovel all this right now because, well, it's basically ice. Oh, Chip, that, is that a hawk? That wasn't a hawk. I think that was a turkey vulture. That was a turkey vulture that I think had ice on his wings. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. But yeah, we're, we're covered with ice, guys. Covered with ice. Let me get this cleaned up. All right, guys, so I, <laughs> I almost got the top part done of the driveway. And I'm sitting here, and another turkey vulture takes off. And I'm hearing the wings, they're all frozen over. And then I look, I look up. I don't know if you guys can see way up there. There's one there. Let's see if he takes off. But yeah, there's a, there's like four of them. <laughs> four of them up in the tree right there. Oh, there's one right there. Another one over the neighbor's house. There he goes. He's trying to. Oh, 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 oh. Is he gonna crash? They're disgusting birds, just to let you guys know. I don't know if you've ever seen one up close. They're definitely disgusting, but it's crazy that they camped out by our house. I don't know if that's a sign or what. I've never seen them camp out here overnight, but yeah. I mean, we got everything from real turkeys that come around here every now and again. Yep, turkey vultures hovering the house. Strange, not a good omen, I don't think. You guys, let me know if that's a bad thing. driveway is clear sounds like uh, everything's melting from the trees hitting the ground cars are cleared off cleared off the wife's car beast is partially cleared a lot of you guys ask me questions what kind of lift do I have what kind of wheels what's my tire setup this is a, a six inch four link BDS lift I did have the dual shock hoops on here at one point I took them off because the ride in the front was uh, well, it wasn't that comfortable. It was definitely a, a violent ride. So we opted for the reservoir shocks, 2.0 Fox reservoir shocks. Definitely a better ride. I'm thinking I could still make it better with a Thurn Fab active sway bar kit, which, you know, at some point we will be uh, installing on this truck. We also have our American Force wheels, flux wheels. They're 20 by 12 with a negative 44 offset. And uh, we're rolling on 37 by 12 and a half inch Nitto Ridge grapplers. And um, yeah, I'm very happy with the tires. Nitto's tire composition, I think, is a little softer than most brands. Like, I, I've been a Toyo fan for a long time. So I might switch to Toyos when these tires are ready to be replaced. But I am happy with these tires, the way they perform in the snow, rain, sand, creeks, wherever we've had this truck, they perform very well. But if you guys have any questions, if you're new to the channel, just hit the playlist. There's a playlist on the channel based on this truck. Every upgrade and mod that we've done to this truck, it's in that playlist. But today we're going to 10.8. I'm gonna help Mitch out with a problem he is having. And uh, I, I'm, I'm glad that I can help him with this. A little upgrade project on his truck today. Hi, so just to let you know, we've got some exciting stuff coming up. Some Rebel content that has to do with the dyno and some upgrades. We're going to be taking the Rebel to Maple Grove Automotive and we're going to put it on the dyno to get some baseline stock numbers. Then we're going to add some mods to the Rebel and then do some more dyno pulls after that to see what type of gains we got. You excited? I am. Oh, there she goes. That's so cute. I'm still on the fence on what to do with the lift. I don't want to lift it too much. But then I don't want to lift it not enough. I, I mean, I don't, 
There's a couple six inch lift. Uh, what is she? Oh, she's trying to kick the ice off the back of her truck. Uh, there's a couple uh, six inch kits out there. Pro Comp makes one. Rough Country. Yeah, yeah, I know. A lot, a lot of you guys aren't a fan of Rough Country, but all it is is spacers and s springs. But uh, I don't know. I think I'm going to wait. I may just do the Mopar lift, which is, you know, it's still going to have the truck covered on the warranty. I don't want to get too, too crazy with this truck. It is the wife's truck. So I'm thinking I'm just going to do the Mopar. It's a two inch lift. Uh, the Rebels already have an inch lift, so it's only going to give me one inch. But that one inch will give me a nice, give me enough room to get 33s on there comfortably. Maybe even 35s. I don't think I'm going to put 35s on there because then you got to worry about rubbing and stuff. And it's just not going to be practical if you do ever take it off road, especially when you're turning and articulating over things. So we're going to stick the 33 inch tires on there if. I go that route. If I end up going six inches, probably, well, definitely gonna put 35s on, maybe even 37s, but I don't think I'm gonna go that route with the wife's truck because it is her daily and I want it to, I want it to be practical for the family. So, yes, but stay tuned. Definitely some performance mods coming for it first before we even touch the lift. And the wheels are coming as well. So we're out at 10-8 Emergency Vehicle Services with my buddy Mitch. Don't. Mitch is in a better mood today because you know why we're upgrading his the bulbs and his headlights and these He's got the reflector housing. So I know we've done many projector headlights on the channel This will be the first Reflector headlight housing that we have upgraded the bulbs in thanks to headlight revolution He's already got upgraded fog light LEDs that I gave him out of the beast when we switched over to the rigid industries pods But we're gonna give you a full walkthrough disassembly of the grill removal the headlight housing removal and installation it's going to be quick it's very simple anyone can do this at home look how yellow those things are not for long guys not for long you can see the leds that we already installed let me show you what we're installing today from headlight revolution so we got our power management modules and we have their new supernova perfect fits these things are perfect, they're new, and they're bright. You've seen us install other Supernova bulbs in previous videos. These are the bee's knees, these are the ticket. These are gonna make a huge difference in Mitch's life at night. No more yellow lights, he's gonna be able to see at night. And guys, you wanna use LEDs and reflector housings. You do not wanna use HIDs because you'll blind the hell out of people. Trust me, believe you me, you're gonna blind people. And I'm actually gonna be switching out my fogs, you know, that I have the Rigid Industries dualies. I'm gonna be switching them out for DOT approved ones because I have the spot ones. I have them aimed all the way at the ground below anyone's bumper and it still causes people to stare at them and I don't wanna be blinding anyone. So we're gonna be swapping them out. Not today, but very soon, very soon. But to get this thing started, you got some push clips that you're gonna remove. I'm just gonna pop those out right there. There's six of them. You got one there, one there, one there, one there, one there, and one there. And my truck, we've removed them so many times, you can just pull them up half the time. Let's see if I can get his up. Maybe not. <laughs> yeah, they're in there. Yeah. So you get them all removed, you just lay it right there. It's not gonna hurt anything. And then you got, I believe these are uh, 10 millimeters, so you gotta remove this 10 millimeter bolt, that one, that one, and that one. And these have, the ones on the end here have a coarse thread because they're going into plastic. These are not a coarse thread, so something to keep in mind. You don't want to over tighten these because you'll strip them out when you're putting them back in. There you can see the coarse thread for the end ones. There's little push clips that lock the grill into place into the truck. You're just gonna pull them out here real quick. You just, they should just pop. All right, well, mine, mine just pops right out. Okay. If you have a flathead, you just wanna put it in there to separate it a little bit. That might help too. Let me show you guys. My truck is a little bit different for some reason, maybe because it's a heavy duty. These are push clips on his down at the bottom, and then you have these clips too. 
that's what I that's what we use the flathead to just pry out and pop. These ones are gonna be a little bit more difficult. Now on to the housing guys. See how simple this is? It's only been five minutes in and we're already this far down. You got a 10 millimeter bolt here, another 10 millimeter bolt, and then on the inner wheel well, there'll be a little door. You're just gonna flip that. So you got a push clip on the door. It's a little bit different than mine. Yeah. Howdy. What's up, buddy? You working on grumpy truck? Yeah. Somebody's gotta do it. <laughs> There's a white clip up there. You gotta push that up, and that will unlock the headlight, and then you can remove it. There's that white clip I was telling you guys. It's on the back side. So it was down in that position. I pushed it up. And you're just gonna unplug your harnesses here. That's it. Buying a ram. No. Oh, There's plenty of rams on the box. <laughs> that easy, guys. You're just going to repeat the process on the other side, and then we're going to install the new LEDs. So you're going to remove this dust cover, and that nasty incandescent bulb, and then we're going to put a power management module in. Start off by plugging everything in, making sure your polarity is all correct as you're going through. You got your power management for your H11 bulbs connected to the little adapter that comes with the kit. That's connected to your bulb. Make sure, again, your polarity is correct. You got little plus and minus signs there. Plus is going to be your hot, minus is going to be your ground. And then it's probably easier to put the bulb in first and then fish everything in behind it. Like so. And you're just gonna slide everything right in there. And you're done. And we're just gonna repeat the process with the 9005 bulb, which is your high beam. Man, that was loose. Didn't seem very tight. Definitely different from the projector headlights. Definitely different. You can't fit everything inside the housing, guys. So what you need, what you end up needing is these pass-through harnesses. We're gonna end up drilling, drilling a one-inch hole in the center of the high beams dust cover right here, this plastic dust cover. And then we're gonna use this pass-through harness to run the wires into the housing. All right, so this is actually gonna be mounted onto the truck somewhere in the vicinity of where these headlights are gonna be. You can run these wires into the housing. And again, you always want to check your polarity, make sure that's correct. Your dust cover is going to be right here. And this is going to be inside the housing. And this is going to connect into your bulb. Again, making sure your polarity is correct the whole time. So that's how it's going to look, guys. Dust cover, housing, mounted to the truck. You need this. Without this, you'll have flickering, flashing, and outages. So you definitely need the power management uh, module for these trucks. I just hope I don't drill into my finger. Yeah, you look good, you look centered. Oh. Okay, so we're gonna fish these wires through the dust cover. Now that Mitch got it all nice and cleaned up. And you're just going to set that rubber grommet into the hole because you're not fitting that module inside the housing with the bulb. We tried. We tried. Yep, we did. Made a valid effort. Because the projector headlights, you can do that, but that's what it's going to look like when you're done. All right, it comes with these little adapters, guys. You don't need them. Take 105. I know, dude. <laughs> Holy shit. There we go. Finally. Finally. Again, guys, make sure your polarity is correct when you're plugging these in because you don't want to have to take everything back apart to recheck your connections. That would be a pain in the butt. You're just going to sort of fish your wires down into the housing behind here.
And then you're just going to connect that into your power management module, GTR lighting, headlight revolution. We'll see where Mitch wants to mount this in the front of his truck. This is always a pretty good option, like right there. Some double-sided 3M tape. But it's his truck, and we'll see where he wants to mount it. So when you guys get your perfect fit Supernova LEDs from Headlight Revolution, you're going to see it comes with a little Allen key. That Allen key, which I should have showed you before I put it in the headlight mm -hmm. housing, which I'm not going to take it back out, but you see how the diode is pointing down and the diode's pointing straight up. That's where you want it to be in these 4th Gen Ram housings. That's going to give you the most light output with these LED bulbs. You can adjust that. There's a little Allen head screw that you can loosen and you can twist that. That's what's cool about these lights that gives you more options. Just something to make note of I want to share with you guys. And Mitch has opted for some Velcro, industrial strength Velcro. Followed my suggestion and mount right there, which is perfect because it's gonna go right to your headlight right there. We're gonna get these reinstalled. We're gonna repeat the process that we did to remove them. Before we bolt everything back up and tighten it down, we are gonna test it to make sure we have no issues. Very important step. If you have an issue, then you're just gonna retrace your wiring, make sure you don't have something, reverse the polarity on something and cause an issue. Fingers crossed, guys. First test. Oh, they already came on. <laughs> okay, lows work. Try highs. Boo! Dude, you're gonna be able to see. Yeah. For sure. And no check engine. That's no. That's what it's about. That's why Headlight Revolution. Guys, I tell you this all the time. Headlight Revolution, they do their homework before they put a product out there. Stuff works. Plug and play. Unless you have a 2015 RAM. If you have a 2015 RAM, I, 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 it's, a, it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. You're probably gonna have to get a wire harness with capacitors and all kinds of nonsense. But yes. So we're gonna we're gonna bolt everything back up, and then we're gonna test it out a little bit more, to make sure we don't have any flickering. But so far, everything looks great. Hey, one thing to note, guys: all the fourth gen Rams, you'll see this. This is cracked. They crack them at the factory because the plastic sucks here, and you don't have to tighten. You don't have to kill these. You don't have to kill them when you're tightening them up. But don't panic if yours is cracked because that's normal. Even when you loosen it up, it might crack after you loosen it up. It's done at the factory. It's nothing that you guys did. They're cracked on my truck, cracked on his truck, cracked on every Ram truck that I've ever seen. So if you have one, that's a rarity. You have a unicorn. Keeping you guys updated, I got some of this uh, Heat Shield Products Thermo Sleeve for over by the, the Terpski the exhaust housing. So I'm going to end up putting that in. Um, I'm going to replace this because I'm just not happy with the way that looks. And I got this stuff called Dura Wrap. It's really cool. But just note that you're going to have to go bigger than what you actually think you need. This is three inches. Three inches is not big enough to get what I need right here. So I actually ordered one that's eight inches. I went big. I went really big. So when that comes in, I'm going to put the thermo sleeve on the one side, and then I'm going to put this Dura wrap over top, and it's going to look good. It's going to be one nice seam harness going across there. And I think I'll finally be content with that. But when that comes in, we'll be doing that. Not bad the way it's set up now, but it's going to look better. I don't think I'm gonna get any nighttime driving footage from Mitch because he's got somewhere to be, but he's definitely happy with his upgrade. If you guys are interested in this kit, basically this is what it consists of. If you wanted to add the fog lights, you need another H11 with the power management modules. 
that's it all the information in my video descriptions as always always important stuff in the video descriptions and there's a 15 percent discount for our subscribers the discount code is in the video description i believe it's beast we had to change it a few times because it got hacked but i believe now it is beast but check it out i keep it updated in the future videos if it does change always a long time support of the channel always taking care of me you guys they've been with me from the start they're the ones that gave me i hit them up cold email chris responded back to me and they've been with us ever since and they've been a huge supporter of the channel so you know if you guys are interested in upgrade these guys do all their homework anyone that has installed their kits can tell you i've done plenty of installs on the channel definitely check them out it's well worth it save yourself the hassle by going on Amazon and buying bulbs that aren't gonna work in your truck and you're gonna be miserable thinking you're saving yourself some money when the stuff doesn't work. It's gonna work when you get it from Headlight Revolution. If you have an issue, they got the support to help you. And even I've helped out some customers, but I don't hit me up. I mean, you can, you just might not get a response back for a long time. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you're stopping by for the first time, make sure you tap smash. Do something to that subscribe button. Hit that little notification bell. We love you guys. I'll see you in the next upload. And the next upload, we are fixing some stuff on the beast. So I just wanted to give you guys a look at night on the uh, Supernova Perfect Fits here. A little hard to tell when you're in a lit up parking lot, but pretty bright. Probably about three times brighter than my incandescent halogens there. I'm gonna look at the truck here with them on. Gives the truck a completely different look there.